Hello ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here. So, at the request of Tabby, I had a meeting with the Sword Coast Legends dev team in a live, behind-closed-doors preview of the upcoming D&D Cooperative RPG. Once we all settled in, two devs and five media members, the lead developer Dan Tudge, director of this little title and another little title called Dragon Age Origins, asked for a volunteer to be the dungeon master. Nobody else spoke up, and I knew this was a unique feature of the title, so I volunteered. We watched the current public trailer, and then we had a walkthrough on setting up your own RPG. And I've got to admit, the tools are simple enough to quickly get a handle on, but deep enough to really construct your own epic tale that your friends can actually adventure through cooperatively. In about five minutes, the dev set up a small medieval city with a vendor inside and an NPC that would give the party a quest to locate a family member who's missing. The vendor, the NPC, they were all customizable, completely customizable. Changing their race, their class, their weapons, their gear, their dialogue could be as deep or as quick as you'd like it to be. Creating the quest was as easy as three clicks that link over to the mini-map. Like a classic game of Baldur's Gate, it opens up to reveal a new area for adventurers to explore once they have the quest, which would lead our party of unique personalized characters to a small cabin in the woods. Here, the developers set up the second part of the quest line, changing the time and weather to be more foreboding with a thunderstorm in the evening. Long shadows were cast by torches outside. Inside the cabin, the devs placed a few props, including a dead body and some blood splatter. Finding this poor soul would be the second part of our quest. For an added bonus, he demoed how to set up traps, and he added an ambush of demons and cultists, a faction that he had actually designed just for this story. Yeah, you can make your own faction and save them for ease of use, customizing each individual unit with their look, abilities, armor. Even the clothing had color slider bars. The quest gave a clue that the cultists had taken the person we're searching for to a cave or a dungeon in the north. This would be where we actually got to take control and play some. The game has its own epic four-player main campaign, like a classic RPG. It's all top-down. But this, what I got to play, the Dungeon Master system, is something I'm most excited for. Five players, four adventures, and one Dungeon Master go on a cooperative story. Driven by the creativity of the group, like, you know, a proper paper D&D game. So far, everything had been set up for the quest, but now, after we set up some quick traps and some nasty surprises, we actually started playing the dungeon. And I played as the DM live with four other players. The Dungeon Master player runs on a sort of energy bar. He's got a plethora of tools that he can use to change and enhance the experience of the other adventurers that are making their way through. I was a fairly sadistic DM and would do all kinds of things to make life really hard for the other media members. I love putting down traps outside chests or littering the ground with spider eggs that would hatch if the party didn't destroy them quick enough once they were triggered. With each thing that I added into the game, my energy bar went down as we played. But it refilled over time. The bigger the thing you place, the more energy it takes. Now this is only during gameplay. In the setup beforehand, it didn't seem like anything took energy. You could just build your story the way you wanted. At one point, I added a tent with a goblin that I had found in a DM loot. Yep, the Dungeon Master actually finds loot randomly as the adventurers make their way through. Like I said, it doesn't have to be about a competitive experience. Your job as a DM is to tell a story and not wreck the faces of your friends. Well, I mean, it can be, it's really up to you. For me, it was about the storytelling aspect. That's what has me most excited about this. So when the party destroyed my spider and cultist army in the first few rooms, I found a glowing bit of light coming off a spider's corpse. Clicking it, I found Bob the Goblin. Well, I later named him Bob, who I gave a home, which is this little crappy tent, and I made him a vendor for the party to find. Little did they know, Bob was a trap. Once the party reached Bob and started shopping, I sprung my trap, changing Bob's alignment and adding reinforcements from the rear. I yelled over the table, Betrayal! Which garnered a pretty good laugh from the other media guys. Tim Schwalk, the design director, was kind enough to hang out and lead me through the controls, which I found fairly intuitive, even at this early stage of development. Getting to the end of the dungeon, we already had a giant spider queen as a boss set up beforehand who I got to take direct control of, but not before going full ham on the spider eggs. <laughs> I actually made it a little harder than it should have been, and I kind of wiped the party, but all of one member, the team's dwarf warrior. This is when I had to pull back the spider so our dwarf could have a chance of saving the rest of the party. Controlling the spider gave me some really fun abilities, like an area of effect poison spray or webs that could slow the enemies down. She had around 10 or so abilities, so I didn't really get to see all of them, but she did have one that had her leaping up into the ceiling, allowing for her to come down, drop down, and pounce on a target. What shocked me was that the DM can directly control 
any of the NPCs in the field and use their abilities. Even while playing the demo, I was thinking of all kinds of stories and quests that I could come up with. Stories of murder or political intrigue, kingdoms at war, or maybe an orc invasion, hell, you name it. It's the creativity of the community that'll make this game great, and the devs understand this. That's why the focus is on making these tools work and work perfectly. I'm really excited to see what kind of stories and campaigns the community comes up with. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more gaming goodness, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.